This episode of the ResortLoop.com podcast is brought to you by Joffrey's Coffee and Tea Company. Joffrey's is proud to be the official specialty coffee of Disney. Enjoy drinks and pastries at Joffrey's kiosks throughout the parks and check out the Disney specialty coffee collection only at Joffrey's.com. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Once again, if you're traveling to Epcot, please remain on board. You'll need to change monorails at the Transportation and Ticket Center. Hey everybody, welcome to ResortLoop.com. Uh, Holidaython 2014 continues. Uh, as you can probably tell from the audio, uh, we do not have Tim tonight. He is preparing for uh, ResortLoop.com's uh, New Year's extravaganza. He is actually up uh, here at the studios um, attaching the Tiffany crystals to the ResortLoop.com ball that will fall at midnight uh, New Year's Eve. So uh, uh, we're hoping he doesn't fall off of the roof. So anyway, uh, we I, I wanted to take an opportunity to uh, to talk about a movie that my son and I just went to and and um, my lovely wife as well. Um, but uh, we we went and saw Big Hero Six, and I just I had to talk about Big Hero Six because I loved this movie. So I'd like to introduce uh, my son Bobby, who is fourteen years old. He'll give you a a young man's perspective of the movie, and. Um, there probably will be some uh, some uh, uh, spoilers here for you, so just uh, you know, <laughs> bear with us. Uh, real quick, I want to uh, let you know uh, this is this is the official Disney uh, uh, take on Big Hero Six. Okay, so uh, when a devastating event befalls the city of San Francisco, that's where you're at. It's kind of a combination of San Francisco and Tokyo, obviously, uh, and catapults Hero. That's our. That's actually our hero. Into the midst of danger, he turns to Baymax, which is the inflatable balloon kind of looking guy. Everybody's seen what that looks like. Turns to Baymax and his close friends, adrenaline junkie Gogo Tamajo, uh, Tamago, uh, Neat Nick Wasabi, uh, chemistry whiz Honey Lemon, and fanboy Fred. Um, for help, uh, determined to undercover the mystery, Hero transforms his friends into a band of high-tech heroes called Big Hero Six. This movie is inspired by uh, Mar the Marvel Comics uh, Big Hero Six. So if any of you guys that uh, are big into comics know uh, Big Hero Six, that's where it's coming from. So uh, those of you that don't know, it is a Marvel movie. So we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. But, uh, Bobby, what were your impressions of Big Hero 6? What did you think of Big Hero 6? Um, I thought that it was very good. You know, I think that they really... They did a great job, you know, developing the characters and making them seem realistic and relatable to real-life events, you know? Like, Hero right. loses his brother, and we've all had someone that we've lost right, in our right. lives, and we've all had that same kind of confusion and right, anger, right. you know, that he has. Well, that's why he turned Baymax into a superhero. Right. Now, Hero, Hero's not a hero at first. He's a troubled kid. He's 14 years old, just like you. Yeah. So he's, a, he's kind of a troubled kid, and uh, he... He, he's getting, you know, he's doing things he shouldn't be doing, and his brother is really uh, kind of his mentor, kind of, because they lost their parents, they're living with their aunt, kind of, you know, your typical Disney movie, there are no <laughs> parents, you know, uh, tragedy befalls the, the hero of the movie, um, and uh, the protagonist, if you will, you, you're ta learning about that in school, <laughs> yeah. so, uh, but, uh, so, uh, tragedy befalls him, after he, him and his brother, his brother introduces him to these other characters, the other four that uh, that are part of the big hero six. Uh, so there are the four friends. There's Hero and of course Baymax that that make up Big Hero Six, the the group, uh, the superheroes, if you will. But uh, it it's I I thought it was very similar as far as animation wise to uh, uh, 
Meet the Robinsons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You agree with that? Yeah, I I haven't noticed that until you know you just mentioned it, but yeah, uh, Meet the Robinsons. Most people don't really know about Meet the Robinsons. Right. Yeah, you know, it's one of those really underappreciated Disney movies. Absolutely, but, I agree with you. Yeah, I think they tried to probably model their animation with Big Hero Six, given that it looks futuristic, uh, to Meet the Robinsons. Right, right. So, uh, Hero is a is a a in essence, a boy genius who graduated mm-hmm. high school before the age of uh, 14, didn't want to go to college because he didn't want to go to quote-unquote nerd school because he was a genius. But his his brother introduces him to the school that he's going to because his brother's a genius as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, why don't you tell him who, who actually invents Baymax, the, the balloon-type character of the... Uh, um, well, Hero's brother invents him, uh, Baymax, which Baymax is, uh, he, his brother's image for Baymax was to be a healthcare provider, uh, right. just an everyday, you know, appliance. But Hero, after his brother dies, sees him as kind of more, like he has right. more potential than right. just being, you know, a doctor. Right, because so, uh, Baymax is actually a, he's a robot. Yeah. W- within that whole inflatable suit in essence uh and can uh, ab- obviously robots can be reprogrammed and that kind of goes bad toward the the middle end yeah. of the show um because hero gets angry and uh, reprograms baymax to not listen to his original programming which was of uh of, of the medical field his huggable so. design <laughs> right right so um so uh, it, Hero decides he's going to get into this school because he, he falls in love with the school. He really likes the other four characters that are in the school, friends of his brothers. And uh, a tragedy befalls. We won't give that away, but a tragedy happens. Uh, but it, in order to get into this school, he has to come up with a uh, a, an exp- uh, a, a device, a, an experiment, a, a uh, what, what do you call that? Uh, uh, a presentation a presentation and he has these tiny little microbots nanobots nanobots um, and and the the villain of the film uh, kind of steals that technology from from hero mm-hmm. so that's kind of how it all I mean his brother is uh, it dies in a in, in, in a tragedy uh, he becomes angry because the person who or how that tragedy happened was not an accident and he discovers this and decides he's going to do something about it and uh, he reprograms Baymax to be a superhero mm-hmm. um, I think that Baymax like it's really hard to relate to mechanical you know uh, characters right. in movies right. but they develop Baymax's personality, his dry sense of humor, like his his like human like you know right. um, way of acting. They really um, emphasize that and allowed the uh, watcher to feel connected to Baymax. Right, right. Like, uh. Kind of, kind of like if you if you think about it, kind of like any of those you folks that have seen the second Terminator movie, uh, where where the young boy uh, gives the Arnold Schwarzenegger character or Arnold Schwarzenegger character robot a little bit of personality. Yeah, gives him some cool things to do, like when they do the fist fist bump. That's one of my favorite parts when he teaches him the Baymax how to fist bump. Yeah, that is so cool, so cool. Uh, so, uh, I think, I think, again, not giving away anything, but I think that this movie, I really do, and you, you can tell me because you're 14 years old. This is a boy's Frozen. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah, I think every young man needs to go see this movie. Mm-hmm. It is that good. Um, and honestly, uh, Hero is what every you know boy below the age of 14 wants to be right you know? right and uh 
the, everybody wants a Baymax. You yeah, know, Baymax everybody would be wants very cool that, game. you know, companion that will go with you until the very end of the line, you know. Right. Kind of like right. uh in the Captain America films, Bucky, you know. Right, right. There you go. There so, you go. like Again, they really did a good job developing the characters and making them seem real and making you have like, like a emotional connection to them. Right. You know. Right. And uh, and because of that that emotional connection, that's what brings Hero back from this this uh, desire for revenge mm-hmm. for the person who who caused his brother's demise. Um, it's it's actually Baymax that brings him back um, the robot because it's uh, you know he he has such a great personality what about when Baymax was starting to lose his power when when oh. his, his power got low <laughs> um, that that scene uh, Disney did a very good job because there is a million ways you can go right. with a robot right. losing power but they decided to go with the well, Loopy, we won't tell. Well, we, well like, we're not gonna we're not gonna give that away. Okay. We're not gonna give that away because that uh, is one of the that is one of the best parts of the movie. And again, that kind of humor it allows you to get the connection to Baymax, like the prolonged scenes, like uh, when Hero activates him in his house and he acts like. Uh, right. makes the bookshelf fall right like just right. slowly and like those prolonged scenes of just like Baymax trying to do something but right not right. able to and like when he kicks the uh, office chair and tries to right. pick it up right. it's yeah. like those like li- it's the little things that make right. you have the connection that you want you know with a uh, mechanical character just the blinking the blinking yeah. you you loved when he waves how he waves yeah he waves like in a circular way right. like really close to right. his body like in a little s- yeah. like circle and it's the exact same way every time because yeah. he's a he's a robot obviously but uh um now <clears throat> we are going to we're not going to give anything away but there's a little surprise in there keep in mind when when we first started this show, keep in mind this is a Marvel movie, okay? It's a Marvel movie, so I just want you all to think. Any, any of you Marvel fans out there that love the Avengers and the Iron Man, there is a person that shows up in every Marvel movie. And and this time it's at the very end of the credits. Yeah, you got to stay through the entire end credits of of the movie. In order to see this person, but you got you got to watch the whole movie all the way to the end. And then how about how about when Fred? Fred's one of the characters who he wants to be a, a fire breathing dragon, and and a hero is able to uh, provide him a suit that allows him to be a fire breathing mm-hmm. dragon to fight the bad guy. Uh, but uh, he ends up there's there's a little twist, and uh, who his father is is pretty cool as well. Um, yeah, and that person in real life, uh, he said that he has always been a huge Disney fan, and to be in a Disney movie was like his lifelong dream. Right, right, yeah. You know, in yeah. a Disney animated feature. Right. That's That's got to be a big deal. Um, and while we're on the subject of the character Fred, they made all of the human characters, all of the other four friends, very realistic with the culture and the right. way right. Um, kids act today. You know, they Good. didn't make it some like stereotypical, you know, like sometimes those kind of movies right. do. But they right. made it seem like they were living in 2014 with all of the technology and all of the clothing and all of the pop culture of 2014 yeah yeah now it's it is set in the future too futuristic kinda, yeah i would like, say not not all that far in the future kind of yeah it's like a, like a mix between like astro boy and the robinsons meet the robinsons there you go. kind of future there you go. yeah you know? yeah um so um what do you think? How uh, I mean, what's the age group of young young boys this year? Now, I'm not saying girls won't like it either, but I I still say that this is a boys 
Frozen. This, this I don't understand why this sh- movie, and maybe it's because Frozen has kind of overlapped everything and, and overtaken everything Disney, but this movie should be huge among young boys. Yeah. What, yeah. what age group are you thinking that might really enjoy this movie? Um, given that I'm 14 and I loved it, probably between, like, Three and sixteen. There you go. And even there above, given that yeah. well, you, as an adult right, man, right. And then of course us, us grown ups love it. You know, us, us grown guys think it's it's cool too. Because I would have loved to have had something like that as well. Even if this isn't your like, even if you aren't a Disney fan, you haven't seen many Disney movies, you're still going to love this movie because it relates to everyone in some way. There you go. You're right. Yeah, because the the two two of the. Uh, uh, team of big hero six are our young ladies mm-hmm. um and uh it's just it's it is it's a really really good movie i i the the animation is beautiful um i, I gotta be honest i didn't see any uh other than other than the portrait and we're just gonna say this other than the portrait in fred's house i didn't really see any easter eggs but again we only saw it one time yeah uh, but can't wait to get this movie on uh, on DVD or Blu-ray because it is just it's a beautiful beautiful movie beautiful. beautifully animated yeah beautiful. and um, uh, I highly recommend it. What do you think, Bobby? Um, on a scale to one to ten, I'm gonna have to say ten. Excellent. There you go. There you go. Um, well, that's all I've got. We don't want to give away too much of the movie. Just go check that out. Uh, you're not going to be disappointed. I don't think you could be disappointed. Uh, so. Uh, that's all I've got. As uh, Tim usually says, uh, thanks for listening, everybody. He is uh, Resort Loop Tim on the Twitter and uh, uh, Tim Resort Loop Scott on uh, on Facebook. And I am Resort Loop Bob on the Twitter and Instagram. And don't forget uh, Facebook forward slash Resort Loop. Give us a like over there. Rate us on iTunes. Don't forget to listen to us on The Stitcher. And uh, everybody, just thanks for listening and uh, have a happy new year. As Tim is uh, finishing up the uh, the uh, resortloop.com ball that will fall on New Year's Eve, so uh, we've still got a little bit of uh, holiday thon left. So hang in there, folks. It's uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, as Tim says, uh, you've been listening to the Gateway to the Magic. See you, everybody. Harry, baby. Uh, Harry, baby.